So let's go into the G6 panel and I'll we'll just, and any of the 2018s and a lot of the 2015s and onwards, you'll see this G6 panel. So it looks like this, this one would be the one that you would see typically in the rear uh, closet or in that area. And this would be the one that you'd see in the front electrical compartment area called the chassis panel. So your house panel and your chassis panel. All the intelligence happens on this driver card, okay? So the driver card is what takes the message off the CAN bus. It decides, is that the right message for me? It turns that channel on and off or dims the channel. The driver card's doing all that. So you can just take a look when I pass it around, the driver card in there. So what if you had an issue where you were turning the, the light on and off like this, and it was changing color, but you went to the control panel and you didn't even see this green LED turn on and off, like entry lights is number two, it's not even turning on and off here. Don't go any further trying to test the output of this because it's probably not this. It's going to be an issue on the driver card. Now unfortunately if it is the driver card that's the issue, you do have to replace the whole panel because that driver card's kind of um, press fit right into the, the panel itself. So that, that happens not very often. Examples of that, when that, that happening, or that card failing, would be Right now, these little solder pins are exposed right back here, and we're redesigning this panel to kind of make this all kind of enclosed on the back side. But right now, if there was, say, at some point during this service or, or even production, something touched one of those little pins and shorted out, it would wreck the channel on the driver card, okay? So those would be examples of where the driver card might get damaged, um, and it would need to be replaced the whole panel to address that issue. Another example would be if the net LED wasn't on at all, okay, and you check the power, you check the ground, everything looked good, but the net LED was just not coming on, you're going to have to replace the whole panel because that's the driver card. Does that make sense? But if you're just dealing with a little output issue where the LED is turning on, that's telling you the driver card is, is turning on and off and working properly, but maybe there's a relay that's bad or a FET that's bad or like a FET is what does the dimming um, of the circuit. Uh, you might have maybe a poor solder connection or something like that somewhere in the, the card. So then the card could be replaced in that case by just taking those three screws out, getting the right part number, putting it back in, and you're good to go. And it's going to be a lot quicker for you to do that than replace the whole panel when you can do that. So. This card here, though, is the RSI 9, and this is quite different. This card's actually an intelligent card, and you want to take a look at it closely um, as it's passed around. The, the card itself starts out with a bunch of connectors that your network cables plug into. So going back to uh, your diagram here, you see all these cables home run back to this panel. This is where they plug into. Now this is really important to understand because some people think maybe it's important that the connector plugs back into the exact same location. There's like 12 slots here. That doesn't matter. Again, it's the party line system, whether I take this keypad and plug it in somewhere else or I plug the network cable from here to here, that doesn't matter. You, can, you don't need to worry if you have to unplug some of them, well, oh man, i got to plug them in exactly the same place again. This one doesn't matter. These ones do matter. So if you go mixing these up, you know, you're going to have the entry lights turning on when the living room lights should be turning on and vice versa. Okay? So these ones, if you do unplug them, I think usually on the production line they do mark them number them, but if you if they're not, you're going to want to take a sharpie and write one, one, two, two, three, three, you know, that kind of thing, okay? Because those are very important. They go back where they, they were plugged into. But your network cables don't matter where they get plugged into. Um, so that's the first thing about it. We talked about, you know, doing troubleshooting there for measuring your voltages and your resistance uh, in this area of the RSI 9 card, okay? So that's what that part of the card does. The next connector over here going back to this diagram, uh, this eight position connector here uh, is mostly used on a Phaeton uh, or a RED or an Allegro where you need to monitor your tank, ga tank levels and LP gas levels. Okay? So your touch sensor connections are going to go back to here. We'll take a look at the schematic for the touch sensor versus sea level here closer to the end of the presentation. But they'll basically connect there. Sea level does not connect, it's a network connection with sea level. But with the touch sensor, it would go to this 8-pin connector and your LP gas, okay? So that's where those, those uh, sensors hook up to so that we can show the tank levels and the LP gas level here on our screen, okay? Or by the bed on this screen. Uh, beside that is your floor heat 
connection. So this is where your temperature sensors for your floor heat would go. And on a 2018, this is also where your thermistors for your air conditioning uh, temperature sensors would go. So they home run right back to this little connector here. Okay? So you can see this, this particular card has some pretty big importance. Uh, let's move over to these two connectors here. Now this is one that argue, like admittedly, I should say, um, was probably a, a, something we could have done better in the design. There's two different five pin connectors right side by side. And what those are is if you have something like your water pump switch down in the plumbing bay that's a rocker switch, you push the button and the water pump turns on and off. So let's just take a look here. Uh, one of these is going to be your water pump switch, water pump switch right here. So even though that's a rocker switch, it's not a multiplex switch, you can see here it's turning the water pump on and off each time I press that switch. Okay? So somehow that signal has to get into our system to know that that button is being pressed so we can turn the water pump on or off. So that's where this thing comes in. Okay? So the water pump switch would be wired directly to here. So the water pump switch is grounded on the one end of the rocker switch and the other output of the rocker switch then goes to one of these inputs here. So if, again, if you refer back to this diagram here, you'll see connector, set, uh, it's connector 14 and 15 here, down here. You'll see the, in this case, the water pump switch is going to a different location. But here we see the water heater status, the bed lift plunger, the bedroom light switch, and the closet light switch. So let's use that as an example. So the bedroom light switch and the closet light switch, you walk into the rear closet and there's a little push button rocker switch there. You push that switch and what it's doing is sending a ground signal to our connector on this panel and it's literally like you pressing a button on the keypad. Every time you press that button it sends a ground signal and it's literally just like doing that. Okay? So there's that, sometimes that, depending on the floor plan, a little rocker switch just inside the bedroom off by itself. That's exactly what it's doing there. So all we're doing is sending a ground signal to this input connector here so that we know when the user wants those lights turned on and off. So that's what these connectors do. Now, because of all of the complexity, all the different things I've just mentioned about this, and the fact that this is almost like a switch panel, this is the card that I was mentioning earlier that needs to be programmed. And it needs to be programmed specifically for the year and the model that it's going into. So for example, when it ships from us to the service department here, it ships with no program, just a test program in it, okay? So if this gets put into a coach without it being programmed, all of a sudden they're going to go to run their closet lights, their bedroom lights, they're going to see that their slides don't work, different things like that if this card isn't programmed. Okay? So it's important that you, you communicate to the service parts person what, what year and model you need this to be programmed for. Okay? So right in there they have, in their files, they have you know 2017 Phaeton bus. So they would program it for that and then when you put it in there, if you're replacing this card, it would do exactly what you want it to do. If it's programmed for the wrong model or not programmed at all, it's not going to work. 